Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Hi, welcome to this edition of Searching for Sasquatch. You'll be glad you tuned in. In this episode, we bring together not one, but three different reports. These reports all come from the state of Wyoming and they come together to form what we like to call a triangulation zone. From the Shoshone to Yellowstone and across at Medicine Bow, Wyoming is a beautiful and picturesque state and Bigfoot is more active here than many realize. Our first report today, number 902 Class Alpha, was submitted by our witness Mark on Thursday, November 5th, 1998. He was in Medicine Bow National Forest when he had the sighting. Here is his report. A friend and I were gathering firewood around 5 p.m. in the evening. There was maybe an inch of new snow on the ground and a moderate fog had settled in on the mountainside. We were maybe two or three hundred yards from camp up on the mountainside. As we gathered small sticks and branches from dead trees, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye, and a huge hairy animal, maybe seven or eight feet tall, ran in front of us. The creature was maybe 10 or 15 yards ahead of us in some thicker timber. The creature ran in front of us for maybe 30 or 40 yards, but because of the fog, we lost track of him. The creature ran or moved quickly on two legs for the entire time we observed him. There is no doubt in my mind that the creature was not a bear, but something else, such as a Sasquatch. Two days later, while hunting, I heard a terrible scream like nothing I'd ever heard before. It wasn't a screech owl or coyote or elk. It was incredibly high pitched and echoed off a canyon wall. Just the thought of it still makes my hair stand on end. There are two things noted about this report. Number one, there was another witness with Mark that not only observed the sighting, but also heard the screams two days later. The second note concerns the environment. The creature was sighted on a mountainside in a dense patch of the Medicine Bow National Forest, which was about 10 or 15 miles from the Colorado border. The elevation there is about 8,000 to 9,000 feet. The sighting was observed about five or 600 yards from the Roaring Fork branch of the Little Snake River. The screams or wailing was heard about three or four miles from where this visual sighting took place. The screams came from somewhere in some very dark timber off the side of a canyon or a gorge. That wraps up our first report. Our second report today comes to us from Teton County, Wyoming, and that is at the eastern edge of our Wyoming Squatch Triangulation Zone. Report number 6441, Class Alpha, was submitted by the witness on Tuesday, June 3, 2003. The witness reported that this sighting was very frightening. It occurred at night near the entrance to Teton Park by the town of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It was a rainy night and there was a slight drizzle. It was dark, except there was a little bit of moonlight when the clouds would let it shine. Even though it's very rural in the area of this sighting, the witness said there was one part of the road that was occupied by many people. The other part was endless wildlife. So this sighting occurred in a rural urban margin area. The witness continues their report and says, my family and I, which totaled five witnesses, including myself, were staying in beautiful Grand Teton National Park for a few nights. And on one of those nights, a mysterious yet real thing happened. That night, when we were all asleep, the family dog started violently barking. Everyone sprang to their feet to discover a large, hairy creature standing about 10 feet from our RV. There was a very strong stench that we could smell through the RV. It turned around, it looked at the RV, and started jogging off in a humanly way. We were all so amazed that nobody in the camper said a word until the next morning. We went outside and there were huge footprints since it was damp and rainy. We didn't get a good look at the animal. It was dark and rainy. We couldn't even tell what color it was, but we can tell you we saw something hairy and very large. A follow-up investigation report was done by BFRO investigator, Dr. Stephen Coy. Dr. Stephen Coy is a former wildlife biologist for the U.S. Department of Interior. Dr. Coy says, quote, I interviewed the witness on September 7, 2003. 
he has become very interested in the Sasquatch mystery since he experienced this incident in Wyoming. After speaking to him, the following reported facts can be added to the report. The witness was on vacation with his grandmother, grandfather, aunt, and uncle. They were planning to drive into Yellowstone Park, but because of the inclement weather, camped in a campground in Teton National Park. There were only perhaps two or three RVs in the campground on this particular night in early June. The campers had gotten snowed off of Jackson Lake that day, so there was snow on the ground, making it easy to observe the large, dark figure from the windows of their RV. He estimated the creature to be about seven foot tall with four foot wide shoulders and a conical, hairy head. It was reaching up into a tree as they could see the bow moving. They could hear it grunting before it turned toward the RV and then ran off in long strides. Huge tracks were seen in the snow the following morning. That's the end of our second report. Our third report today has a lot of detail and comes from the northern end of our Wyoming Squatch Triangulation Zone. This sighting took place in Sheridan County near the town of Shell at the end of a logging road off of US Highway 14. The three witnesses were squirrel hunting. It was about 5 p.m. There was good light and good visibility. It was a clear fall day. The temperature was in the upper 40s. The incident took place about a mile northwest from their camp. The altitude there is nearly 9,000 feet. It's all confer trees and very dense. The witness told us there's a lot of windfall in that area. So when you're walking, you're on the ground as much as you are off of it because of the fallen trees. The camp and where the sighting took place are in a basin about two to three miles wide. The tops of the surrounding mountains are rocky and for the most part bare above the tree line, and there is a creek running through the center of this basin called Owen Creek. This witness gives us a very detailed report. He told us, Myself and two friends went into the forest with our slingshots to find some squirrels. We had been coming to this place for years every September for our church retreat. The elk were just starting to come out into rut, and we could hear them buggling up on the higher plateaus as we were hiking in. We were about a mile or so northwest of the lodge. There was a barbed wire fence cutting through the woods here, and on either side of it for about 10 to 15 yards, the trees were younger, ranging from 4 to 8 feet tall. It was apparently cleared for the making of the fence. We decided it would be easier to walk alongside the fence for a while. We went another few hundred yards, and as we rounded a bend, my friends suddenly stopped. I was following, and so I stopped as well. I thought maybe we had walked up on something. My friend turned and looked at me and whispered, Do you see that? I couldn't see as there was a small pine in my way. I started to ease forward, and as the tree moved out of my view, I just froze at what I saw. At first, I thought it was a large bear, but discounted that idea immediately. It was like a massive human-like animal covered in a dark, coarse-looking hair like a black bear, but not as thick in all areas. The face, chest, inside elbow area, and hands were nearly bare. It was around 8 feet tall, and I would say it weighed between 450 to 550 pounds. It had shoulders that were extremely wide, and they sort of slumped forward. Its arms were phenomenally long and thick. They hung far below the thigh area, and the hands were not as large, but still very big. They were more thick than long. The buttocks were unproportionately large. They didn't seem to fit the animal. They too were very muscular looking. The head of the animal seemed to be plopped right onto the shoulders. If the thing had a neck, it wasn't any more than three to four inches long. The face was somewhat like a man's and somewhat like a gorilla. We were about 15 to 20 yards from it. It stood there seemingly observing us and we crouched there observing it. This went on for at least two minutes. Then it took a small step to the left and forward, partially blocking our view of it from the crouch down. You could hear it breathing, like it had been running to get where it was. Then, my friend yelled at it, saying, Very funny, who's in the ape suit? We told him to shut up. I could tell it wasn't a joke. This, whatever it was, was a real animal. Then it made a noise, not really a growl, but more like a deep cough like it was clearing its throat, but quite louder, like a coughing bark. It's really hard to describe a noise you have never heard before with words. That did it for us, so we turned and sprinted down the fence line, 
took a cut through the woods and went straight to my parents' camper trailer. We told him what we saw, then my friends left to go tell their parents. My father knew I wasn't fibbing. I was 12 then, and I'm 28 now. He had been outfitting for nearly 20 years all over Wyoming, and since I was six, I got to go along on a lot of hunts. He knew I knew the difference between one game animal and another. We waited till morning and headed back into the place where we had seen the animal the day before. We searched for two to three hours, and other than smash grass and currant brushes, we found nothing. You could see where something heavy had stood and then proceeded to the opposite direction that we had fled. My father didn't know what to think of it, but he did believe me and my friends. He said he had heard here and there about the animal that they called Bigfoot, but not in these parts, and he wasn't so sure that such an animal even existed. Even to this day, if it's brought up, he still says, You saw what you saw. The witness's report ends here. Following up, the investigator reports the witness called me at his expense, and we were on the phone for well over an hour. The one phrase he kept repeating is that he has no idea what it is he saw, but that it appeared to be identical to what people describe as being a Sasquatch, and that it was definitely an animal of some kind. The witness claims that he did not have any preconception of what Sasquatch should look like, as he had never heard any mention of them up until his encounter. As I questioned him further, he did reveal some very interesting details about the sighting. The incident took place between 15 and 20 yards distance and lasted two minutes or so. He noticed that the arms were exceptionally long, though they did not quite reach the knees. He also noted that the upper body seemed very disproportionate to the lower body, and that the upper body was very long while the legs were rather short in comparison. The legs were very thick and muscular, though. He also mentioned the rump of the animal as being very large, not protruding, but very pronounced and muscular. He went on to mention that the animal was very broad across the shoulders and that it was slouched forward slightly. He described it as it being like a man that was starting to slouch forward as if to place his hands on his knees. The shoulders appeared to be more forward on the torso than they would on a person as it stood there. He said that the face appeared negroid, except that it was wider through the jowls. He also noted that the animal had an extremely pronounced sagittal crest, so much so that he was unable to make out the eyes of the animal. The nose was pushed up, wide, and flat. During the entire duration of their standoff, the animal did not move. During this time, he said that his friend shouted at the animal a couple of times, but without effect. While they were standing there, he said he could hear the animal breathing from time to time, as if it were taking an occasional deep breath. After the last time his friend yelled at the animal, it let out a sort of a soft cough grunt and moved slightly to the left and forward towards them. He describes the sound as being kind of like a bear cough, but not quite. His attempts to mimic it over the phone fell short. Upon witnessing this grunt and movement by the creature, the boys immediately turned around and fled the area. As he said in his report, they returned the next day with his father, an experienced outdoorsman, but found nothing other than disturbances where the animal had been standing. In closing, he says that at no time during the encounter did he feel threatened by the animal, although he was in awe of the sheer size and perceived strength of it. It seemed equally as curious in them as they were in it. He went on to mention that he did not notice any foul odors associated with the animal and he did not see any features to denote which sex the animal was. Well, we've reached the end of our third report. And this concludes our Wyoming Squatch Triangulation Zone report covering the northern, southern, and eastern parts of the beautiful and picturesque state of Wyoming. Thanks for watching! Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.